Welcome to the Dreamers Hub Podcast. We can be whatever we dream. This podcast is about collaboration between the dreamers and the doers to inspire more people to do more of the things they enjoy doing. When you do what you love, you achieve so much more with your life. So if you're into real people having some raw, unapologetic conversations, let's catch a vibe. Today is your day. And now, Nettie. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dreamers Hub podcast. Today, I'm so excited to introduce to you Sierra, aka the New Mix, aka the Homie. Thank you for being on the podcast. Of course. Thank you for having me. Glad yeah, of course. Of course. I've been wanting to have this conversation with you. I mean, we've had plenty of conversations by now, but I've been wanting to have this conversation with you just because as a creator and as a fairly new creator, you were probably one of the very first people that I was able to reach out to and like feel connected to right away. Um, and I don't know that many people know this about you and I, but we connected on TikTok, and from there, it's mm -hmm. like, it's been like pretty, pretty steady. And I feel like, I don't know if it's reciprocal for you, but for me, like you've been a one, like so helpful for me to like, just become and be, and just allow me to like find my own wave. So thank you for replying back to my DM <laughs> essentially. No, thank you. I mean, it's definitely reciprocated. So I'm always glad to open the door, like tomato, tomato, like let's get this business and let's get it. So period. Um, period. period. <laughs> now, for those of you that are not familiar with Sierra, she does content around, I mean, do you want to break it down for us? You know, I feel like you could do that better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> so I make content pretty much for anyone, but primarily focused towards the queer community, BIPOC community, um, and pretty much anyone, like I said, but in the queer community, we really don't have someone showing you how to wear suits, how to dapper down, how to tailor a suit, how to, you know, do nice. certain things. So that's probably what my content's about. And it's not only just lifestyle, I'm kind of getting into like the meditation and like the self-care, self-love because social media can be a beast. So I like to take my time off and just show you guys, I'm not just turn and turn and turn. I got to take my breaks. So. Oh yeah. Important. That's so important. <laughs> Very important. So important. Um, I did want to ask you though, like, uh, for those that aren't familiar with your story, kind of like your background and yeah. how you kind of like have now, you know, become where you or become or get to the point to where you're at now. Yeah. Um, background basically started growing up with my parents dappering it up. So they would wear suits. Really? And like that. Yes. Yeah, so my mom and stepdad to the nines would dress and like, they would show no me different way. fabric colors and so I kind of started with there with like fashion and then jumping into finding myself as I got older. So like my twenties, I was like, I want to start wearing suits. Um, so background kind of really just started there and like testing out things, finding a tailor. How do I do this? Googling stuff and then figuring out, obviously I'm a woman. So my body is a little bit different than a man. So how do yeah. I do this and still look fly? So, um, yeah, started probably when I was younger and then really the new mix started when I was 20, about five years now. So 22, 23. So, okay. yeah. Um, that's what I was going to ask you is what is, uh, you know, your whole thing is like, you're the new mix. So what does that mean to you and how would you like other people to receive that? Yeah. So the new mix, actually a friend helped me come up with it because when I was starting the blog, I was like, I don't want something basic. I don't want something generic. Like I need a cool blog name or a cool Instagram name. And the new mix essentially is exactly what it sounds like. So it's old mix with new masculine, yet feminine and bold and neutral. So it's all those things that I play into my wardrobe into one and I can play on all of them or I can play on some of them or I can take some and just put out pillars. So I can do masculine and I can also do bold or I can do feminine and I can also do do neutral so that's kind of what the new mix is about which is amazing because growing up i know that there weren't people like you online and you know the internet in my age is still fairly new um because i'm 34 and that did not that was not a thing back then <laughs> right. like i look weird if i try to dress like a boy or then get labeled a boy because i'm not wearing or i'm not in the section that i'm supposed to be shopping in or you know quote unquote, because people want to box you in to either gender, depending on how you identify now. So I think it's amazing that not only do you just like have cool outfits, right? Cause they're fly as fuck, but you also just like provide so much value when it comes to like your TikTok. Like, yeah, there's one thing to showcase your outfits on Instagram, which I think Instagram is really good at doing at as far as like 
um, you know, photography platform. But now with video content, I feel like uh, you're one of the few people that's really thriving when it comes to be like for the people. I know that there's like stories that you make, like with your hair and slow mo, which is my favorite story that you make. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> But like it really, I think you're one of the few creators that really is for the people in in the matter of just like being able to serve people. Like really, your content is serving uh, people in general and not just a specific gender. But mm -hmm. I mean, there's things that I'm sure even people that maybe in the younger generation didn't even know about suits or certain things that how you wear them or what's the difference between a button down and a collared shirt and all that. Like I didn't even know that stuff until I started <laughs> following you. Um, so what does it mean for you um, to serve people in that manner? It's crazy because I sometimes forget, especially with TikTok. Um, and obviously I started on Instagram. That was my first platform. And with TikTok, I reach everyone. And it's sometimes scary because I, wow. have all, I have all age ranges. So I have someone who told me their nephew follows him and he's 12 and calls me. I think he says I'm a well dapper lady. And then she's like, <laughs> 60. So I have all age ranges and it just means a lot because I want the new mix to be longevity. You know, you Google how to wear a suit and the first thing that pops up, I guarantee you the first 30 Google pages are all men's stuff. So I oh, want yeah. the to be plugged in there. Like, Hey, this is androgynous. Hey, this is gender fluid. This is how you wear this. Um, so it's all about longevity to me and keeping this community going, just building it no matter what your age is, no matter what your sex is, no matter what your gender is, anything whatever you identify as it's for you. I can't imagine that that transition or this journey that you've been on has been necessarily the easiest since you were like a pioneer in your own, you know, respected area. Yeah. Um, what has that transition been like for you? Like of coming up, let's say Instagram 2014 to, to like now. Yeah, it definitely it's tough because there's some people, as we all know, the trolls, the keyboard warriors, as I like to call them. Yeah, um, I've been called a man. I've been called all kinds of slurs. And it's just like, why? You know, and there was sometimes like early on when I first started this, my like, first two, two, three years, I would like beat myself down. Like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And then I would get out of it like, Sierra, this is why you're doing this, because you can be whatever you want to do. You can do whatever you want. You can wear what you want and screw everybody else, you know? Um, yeah. So it definitely was hard and it still is hard because sometimes I get comments and I'm just like what's the point <laughs> like what's the point yeah. of being ugly what's the point of being ugly spread positivity you know um so yeah that's it definitely was not easy but it's getting easier because I'm sorry I'm just like I don't care I don't care yeah what did you say what would you think your transition has been as far as get like how long is it taking you to be like I don't care what people think about yeah Ooh, I would say I started this, like I said, about five years ago, but I've been on Instagram since Instagram was Instagram. What was that like 2014, 2015? Yeah, 2014, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I would definitely say maybe not even the last few years, just because I would get so in my head. Um, and it, it took a minute. And then I was just like, you know what, Sierra, you're doing this for a reason. Like, we're just going to make fun of the comments. So if you you on my TikTok, you'll see me reply with the funny sound because it's just like, I don't care. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> so I would say the last maybe three, I've really gotten into that headspace of like, I don't care. You're toxic. Like, you obviously have nothing better to do, but I'm all about positivity. We're not going to start that here because some kid could see that and be like, this is why I don't want to wear that. And that's not what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely takes um, lead by example when it comes to like doing social media for a living. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, I have seen some of your videos where you're like replying back, which I think is so funny. Cause there's like witty, you know, like at that point you do get to a point where you're just like, damn, like you have to take like a little time out, but I'm glad you touched on like the troll part because as big of a following that you have, right. And your community that you've built, that's taking you, you know, the last five years of just grinding it out. Cause social media is a grind. Um, I want to touch on the fact that you said like those, some of those comments still get to you mm -hmm. just to like, because I know that there's people out there that think like, how do you even put yourself out there? Yeah. It just, it honestly took for me to just like deep, deep dive into like, why am I doing this? And these people have nothing else better to do. And I'm doing this for a reason and I'm doing this for a really good reason. So I'm going to keep on pushing 
And like you said, I'll reply back to some with like a witty sound or like a trending sound at the moment, but sometimes it will hit and I'm just like, dang, like. What do you do on those days when it, when something does like connect with you that maybe on, an, on a good day, if you're having a better day, you wouldn't even like, it wouldn't even phase you. What do you do on yeah. those days? Uh, social media detox, love them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna be gone for a couple of days. Y'all have it. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, no, honestly, social media detox or I'll see it and just like ignore it. And I'll sometimes comment back. Sometimes I won't, but social media detox helps me stay head focused straight on. Yeah, for sure. How do you like, um, keep up? Well, you had mentioned, um, you know, that you're, you're meditating now. I saw that you're like now a little bit of your content now switching into like what you're actually into, like current time. Yeah. Um, so like you posted about a, a book that you're reading, yeah. um, how have you like made that mental shift to like, not think, or I guess not pay so much attention to the algorithm or having to be online constantly. Yeah. I think it just comes with posting what I want to post, but also people always ask me, like when I post my Instagram story, like new book of the day or like a quote or something, what am I reading? And I've noticed that that has done really well. Um, but also just keeping sure that making sure that I keep my mental game strong because this stuff is tough. <laughs> so yeah. making that shift has just been, been kind of seamless in a sense because people have asked for, it and it also has resonated really well. And it's kind of just flowed in naturally. Yeah, the community aspect of social media, I think by now we know is like, I guess the main purpose for those that are actually doing it for the right reasons of showing up online or those that do social media, right? So in this case, you do social media like your own way. And it's very specific to a certain, I guess, dynamic of people. But um, I guess how if somebody were to ask you, like, how do you um, deal with your like your mental health? Like what, what do those days look like for Sierra? Oh, self care Sunday, baby. Selfish Sundays. That's what I call them. I at least do it at least once a week or every other day. Um, taking time to journal. I journal, I try to every single day or at least every other day. Um, I have this thing, I'm sitting, looking at it right now, the five minute journal. So it's like, talk about five things in the morning, five things in the afternoon, um meditating taking yourself on a date like it was weird I took myself to the movies and I was like why well, am I at the movies by myself <laughs> how was that I've always wanted to do the movie thing but I haven't I've done the I'm, bar by myself but I've never gone to yeah. like watch the movie by myself I've done it now twice and I think I saw Spider-Man and then I saw what was the most recent one? Oh, I saw Scream so it was definitely like all right I'm by myself people are on dates it's fine <laughs> but it, it made me I'm not crying you are (laughs) no it just made me realize like love yourself you know um so you know taking myself on dates like you said going to a bar and one thing I haven't done yet is going to a restaurant by myself um which is oh I have done that I haven't done that that. I haven't done that yet um or going to go get a manicure or a pedicure um, or a massage so those are my self-care days look like or even just going for a walk like here in Florida I'll go down to the river walk and just look at the, the view of the water and the buildings and the high rises yeah how do you get yourself to disconnect like that and just be like okay with not because I know we've we've talked about it but like I guess I want to tap more into like how do you get yourself to be able to disconnect and not not think so much or put so much pressure on yourself when it comes to social media I think just because I had being completely honest I've had several I don't want to say breakdowns but like mental health days where I'm like I can't do this or I cannot record 20 videos that I have planned out on my whiteboard like there's no way I can do it so I got just burnt out essentially just creator burnout is what I call it so that was made that would made me focus on all right Sierra you have to set aside self-care days you have to set aside time to like take time to yourself and yes my community I love it and it's always 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 growing and I always try to stay engaged but you have to take care of yourself because who's doing this? <laughs> so that's yeah. kind of the mind, mind, shift, mind shift, excuse me, that I put myself into to get to that point, to disconnect. What's been your um, experience now? Like considering you started so early on in, in building your community, um, what's been like, I guess your experience when it comes to like short form uh, video, right? Cause that's where, that's where the attention's at. That's where everybody's on TikTok now. I mean, majority of people are all on TikTok. 
But I know that other creators like compare it to like what used to be like, you know, Instagram and it was just photos. So how do you embrace all these changes when it comes to social media like platforms? It's one of those things where it's like, I should have started Instagram back in 2012. So it's like, you got to keep up with the Joneses essentially. So, (laughs) so once TikTok happened, I was late to the game there too. So I joined, I want to say when did COVID hit 2020? So October of 2020 and COVID was popping. What was it back in like February, March? So I was late. Um, So it's just keeping up with everything, but also making sure like, all right, I take care of myself, but also this is what's coming up. Like the 10 minute videos, I think they're starting to produce and the three minute videos. Which is cr- How do you feel about yeah. the 10 minute videos on TikTok? No, y'all are getting three minutes or less. <laughs> <laughs> 10 minute and le- I don't even negative. I'm gonna take that to YouTube. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I see what they're trying to do there, but like, it's just, I don't, I find myself like, even when three minutes, like I want to like, I'm doing this already. Like I'm trying to scroll, but I'm like, oh, okay. I'll watch the rest of it because I'm like, 10 minutes is a lot. I can't imagine like sticking around to the platform for 10 minutes on there. But you're saying you're not doing 10 minutes on TikTok. I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm not, but as of right now, if you're listening, not in my pipeline right now. (laughs) (laughs) Because a minute is is long enough. Three minutes is pushing it. So yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, Coming down, speaking of the pipeline, I want to know like what your future, like, I guess, what is your ultimate goal when it comes to the new mix and what you're doing now? Like what, what's the ultimate goal and what are you doing at the moment to sustain what you're doing? I, like I said, longevity is the pipeline for me. So, you know, if you are subscribed to like my newsletters, you get eBooks, you get uh, tailoring tips, you get all these guides that I just kind of just send out and update. I try to do it quarterly um longevity is a goal for me because there's you know menswear brands that are just have been here for forever and they're on the top google you know search list and that's where I want to be you know for when I was in high school I couldn't google androgynous fashion like nothing would pop up or if it would it'd be something that was super off the wall so I want kids, not even just kids, but anyone of any age who wants help with androgynous or gender fluid styling to, cool, this is it. This is what I need. And 10 years online, I can still use the same stuff. Dude, seriously. What was it like growing up not having that? Like, how did you find your own like style? I know that you were impacted or like influenced by your parents, but what is like, what's your style journey? Like, Cause I know it's, for me, it was like this, you know? Oh, and I think for a lot of people, when they're just starting off thinking like, yeah. Ooh, can I go into the men's section or, Ooh, should I go to the women's section? Like, what was your journey? Like finding your style? Because ultimately I think finding your style, like, um, is rooted in like your identity. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely say high school. I had no idea what I was doing. No idea. So that was out the door. And then like early twenties, Still didn't really know what I was doing. It was snapbacks and the Louis belts. Don't know what I was doing. <laughs> Not the snapbacks with the Louis belts. <laughs> so uh, it definitely was a lot. And then I was like, you know, I want pants with pockets. I want clothes that feel good and that look good. And some of those look like they're in the men's section. And it took a lot for me to go into the men's section because this was- Oh, probably- I know. I know exactly what you mean. I think it was when I was still active duty and it was like 2014, um, going into the men's section and people just stare. And it was just one of those fears, which sucks that that has to be a fear. Why can I shop in this section? So it was one of those yeah. things that I just had to get over and a hurdle I had to get over and baby, I'm in the men's section every day. I don't care. <laughs> like going yeah. forward, I don't care. So finding my style, finding what I like to wear. Um, and I tell people who I style trying stuff on when you're in the store don't take it home because you're not going to bring it back you're going to buy it and not bring it back try stuff on in the store and don't care don't care yeah and i think it's a lot to get to that point to not care but i think it's people like you that show up online like unapologetically yourself unapologetically just being and wearing what it is you like that really inspire other people that maybe are struggling with that identity portion to be able to even cross over to that section that says men's section, especially when it comes to like as women or mass presenting, I feel like there is uh, like, you know, for people that are, I guess, not as in that, like, I don't give a fuck mentality, like 
like those people i feel like have a really tough time where they're going through that maybe that like awkward stage a little bit longer than maybe necessary like i know for me it took me a while to like jump over to the other side but it's stupid little things that like damn i can only carry my chapstick in my pocket and i've you know i've mentioned that before but it's just like i have no room in women's jeans to carry anything because people just assume that i'm gonna wear a purse or a bag and it's like one of the things that i think you do very well is really and it's even in your bio you say you talk about degendering um you know like the fashion or what it's supposed to be um when it comes to like i guess traditional ways of thinking when it comes to clothes in general but um i guess i want to ask you just like what would be your advice for somebody who is struggling with their identity for somebody who is just struggling to find their style yeah i think the biggest piece of advice that i give people is find someone could be a celebrity could be an influencer could be a neighbor it could be anyone find somebody whose style that you like and take bits and pieces of it so if you like hey my neighbor's wearing this dope hoodie one day let me go try and find a dope hoodie and see how i can style it start with a piece at a time and start adding those into your wardrobe every single day and then as far as going from both since they're gendered men's and women's section just do it go in there and do it it might scare you it might feel weird people might stare um, but just do it because it's going to make you happy. And at the end of the day, your happiness matters. So when you look good, you feel good. And I say that all the time. It does yeah. not matter. So if I look good in a pair of men's chinos, I'm putting them bad boys on. Yeah. Um, damn, that was a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yes, I do this, baby. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like your answers are like dead on point. Like, damn, that's good. Because I'm like, damn, I wish I, I would have found you a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, even though I'm older, I'm like, damn, I wish you existed like when I first started my journey because I would yeah. like it took me a while to like and I'm still just now like finding my, you know, my own and my own identity. But, you know, I feel I'm happy that like we're at where we're at in the world in the sense of like breaking old traditions and old ways of thinking, uh, especially when it comes to like the fashion. But like it's it makes me sad to think that there's still people that struggle mm -hmm. with that you know, with that, like, that's, that's a big thing to like, I just want to encourage people to not only take like accounts like yours, but also like any account or any realm that inspires you to just like, try new things and experiment. Experimenting is really what's going to make you, I guess, see and feel. And when you feel good about yourself, when you feel um, fly in something that you're wearing, like that really does translate across a screen across a photo like depending on where you're posting if you're posting or you're not posting just in general to walk around with confidence mm -hmm. is like super clutch when it comes to that so yeah. my question to you is where do you get all your confidence from uh, um, did you always have that no <laughs> i think i mean so anyone who knows me from high school days will tell you I was a cocky athlete. So that stems from that. I, have a, I was an athlete volleyball player. That was my niece. That was my thing. Um, but as far as fashion goes, it took a while because I was still trying to figure out what I wanted to wear. And then once I found suits and I found out how to wear a suit, especially for my body and taking a men's suit and tailoring it to my body, the world, you couldn't stop me. Like, it was like, it's like a pseudo game armor. Over. <laughs> game over, game over. Um, but no, and it just helped too with like my parents, um, my parents telling me I can wear whatever I want. I can do whatever I want as long as I'm happy. Um, so that has translated into what I am now and helped with my confidence. Um, and I try to put that through my content and try to tell people all the time. Like I said, when you look good, you feel good, you know, and don't let anyone tell you different just because you know, and at the end of the day, two people might, might be knocking you because guess what? They're not confident and they're jealous of how your swag is. Mm. So yeah, when you look good, you feel good. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's hard to sometimes when you're not necessarily feeling your best and people are coming at you a certain way or talking about you in a certain way, or even just kind of like, kind of like, I don't know how you would call it, but like passive aggressive, like make a comment yeah. and add that, like those people that add the LOL at the end of the sentence. Yeah, kind of makes me feel like, mm, did you really mean that? Or are you trying to be funny because you're low key hating? And that's, that's like a fine line sometimes between uh, certain people. But that brings me to my next point is, how did you find like your, um, 
I guess your support system, you mentioned your parents that they've always like been supportive of you. Has that always been like that? Or was there like a transition point where you guys maybe weren't getting along or they've always been like, do what you want? Um, I would definitely say they were always like, do what you want. And then coming out was kind of difficult. And then once I turned 18, it went, it went back and they realized like, this is who I am and this is what I want to do. And I'm gonna wear suits and I'm going to, you know, wear whatever I want to wear. And they had no issues wearing, like if I wanted to wear a suit, they didn't, they didn't care. They, they were trying to wear a suit. As long as you're comfortable and as long as you're happy, you're good. Um, and then the next piece would definitely be my circle. Like my friend circle, those we're good <laughs> like so that is also my other support system if it wasn't for my editor his name is Bradley him and I served together the new mix honestly probably would not be here um because he is the one that pushed me to do it he's like Sierra you have a lot of knowledge that people need to hear and this was back in our active duty days days 2014 2015 I was like Bradley you're crazy I'm not getting on social media I don't want to do that that's too much work so shout out to Bradley because it wasn't for Yeah, him. thanks Bradley. We appreciate you. <laughs> would not be here. Um, and then my mom also pushing me. Uh, my great grandfather. Um, oh, so me, you had the whole squad lit. Like yeah, everybody he, was. He's the reason why Dare to Be Different is a thing. Um, and then Char, my photographer. Um, like it just, my circle runs deep, and I cannot thank them enough. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope that you have that because I know not a lot of people have that. But if you don't. Then obviously that's why social media exists is for you to be social and find your find your tribe in that sense. Um, what would be your yeah seriously? Uh, <laughs> what what would be your like? I guess for people that don't necessarily find have that circle, like yeah. one like how big is the importance of being around people that uplift you? Oh, it's that runs heavy because you are who you are around. You know, you are the people that you hang around. So if you're hanging out with people who are always want to call them Debbie Downers or always, you know, low on themselves or, you know, not doing the best stuff, that's what you're going to go into. So being with people that uplift you, that challenge you, that give you new ideas, that spark certain things, that is powerful and that can last forever. So if you don't have that, I would definitely say social media, like you said, that's how you and I met, or even just going out. I've met people at a coffee shop and randomly connected with people um it just getting out and just being open you know and being vulnerable essentially too and that's what I had to learn was being vulnerable on my platforms and that's how this community has gotten as big as it is I'm glad you mentioned vulnerability because that's like <laughs> super big and, and I just talked to David about this too he said hi by the way um yeah. hi, I just talked to him about that and how he's so vulnerable on his page which is one yeah. of the, so I was telling him like vulnerability like really does like add a human connection like it's one thing to show off a cool outfit or a cool editing video or you know um how important has you mentioned that like being vulnerable was tough is that because you had come from like you have to be tough no matter what oh yeah the military absolutely like you can't be vulnerable in the military what that doesn't even go in the same sentence <laughs> <laughs> no this is that and then also it was just like kind of scary of like all right, if I open up to how hard it was for me to come out or how hard it was for me to go into the men's section or how hard was it for me to go into the tailor and hope to God they're not going to judge me because based off my gender, but I'm wearing a men's suit, you know, whatever the case may be. And then I realized like, hold up, Sierra, that's how you're going to connect with people because they are having those same fears, those same questions. And it was tough at first because I'm not a vulnerable person, <laughs> but it, it definitely has helped with my audience and I've seen it just grow and grow and grow. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I definitely don't come from like a military background, but I am Mexican. And so <laughs> that's yeah. like, there's like that tough part where you have to be tough. You're not allowed to be sensitive. Like that shows weakness if you are. So being vulnerable was not necessarily my norm growing up either. And I think once I like really dug deep, um, then I like realized who I'm becoming or who I am. And I really yeah. own that, like really allowed for me to like, just be open and be like, you know what, I'm not feeling so hot today or I'm, today I'm feeling this way. And I just want to like encourage people to like, it's okay to feel things like it's not like bad to like, you know, feel sad or if your feelings get hurt, like sometimes it's okay to like even say that. And I know people have trouble not only feeling, but also just like apologizing when you're wrong. Yeah. 
Like that no. goes like deep. Like and and I don't know if it comes from necessarily like being Hispanic and like you have that machismo aspect of it, but also like that really is that really is a thing. Like and I just want to encourage people like if you are feeling some type of way, like it's okay to feel your feelings and it's okay to be vulnerable, especially when it comes to being online because I promise you just like my experience and Sierra's experience, it's been probably the most fulfilling time that I've ever felt uh, as far as being online thus far is like, I felt the most connected once I was being vulnerable. Yep, for sure. And like, that's when people are telling me, you know, my nephew follows you and he's 13. Um, I followed you and I've been looking for someone like you for years. Um, I'm, you know, I have a couple older lesbian, a ton of older lesbians that follow me who are in like 60. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure they're <laughs> hyped about you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're hyped about you. 60s, 70s, like, where were you, where were you at? You know? Um, so those were, that was when I've seen the comments come through or the DMs that come through. And every time I get one of those, it just makes me realize like, this is exactly why I'm doing this because there's not many of us out here doing this work. Yeah, for sure. And I think as a, uh, you know, person of color and, you know, me being Hispanic too has played a big part because there's not many people that look like you that are doing it. And there's not many people that look like me that are doing it that are like proud to be who they are or where they come from, like culturally, you know, and like to showcase that. So I just want to say thank you for being you. And thank you for like providing all the knowledge that you do and providing just like, and just serving us as like, cause I'm one of your fans too. You know what I mean? Like serving us. I'm a fan of you. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, like, I'm just a fan. It's just like, it's amazing to see, like, not only can we connect with other people, but also just show that like, there's no, oh, you're here and I'm here. It's more of yeah. like, let's build this thing together. And so I think sometimes that, plays a big part as to why maybe people don't reach out or because I always encourage people like DM people like make friends with people like it's really not weird it's 2022 like yeah. no you're not hitting on that person like that person shouldn't take it that way like so I encourage people to also like reach out to your favorite creators people going being online because I promise you like on the days that maybe me or Sierra don't feel so hot that one DM that you might send can really like be the reason for the next 15 videos that come out or you know 15 pieces of content that come out for that what's your take on that no i completely agree now i'm not gonna lie i am terrible at checking dms so <laughs> you just put me on the spot <laughs> my message request box right now is just overload but when i do go through them like like you said like some of them have given me content ideas and some of them like i'll screenshot and i'm added to videos of like why they're following me or they've been looking for someone like me or uh, they've asked for advice and I try to do my best in answering every single DM that I get and yeah just shoot people DMs you know because I promise you you are checking them I might be slow and I might take a minute but I'm gonna, okay. get, to you. <laughs> I'm gonna get to you so yeah no I agree with that um, I even DM like my favorite creators who are two three four times the size of me so I can be a fangirl too so yeah, for sure. And uh, what's your take on like, just, uh, I guess other creators or like, have you gotten anything like any type of hate where like other creators are like maybe trying to not support you in a sense, like where it's like, I guess like kind of like a block, like people try to block you, block yeah. you of your blessings. You know what I mean? Like, what am I trying to say? Yeah. Like block you of your blessings? Like, I will say there's been one. Um, and it's kind of the stems with like, I think the community of LGBTQ plus BIPOC of, well, I'm doing this, you can't do it either. And it's, well, look, why can't we build each other up? You know, why, yeah. why are we hating on this right now? You know, like you said, we're doing this together. You're not here. I'm not here. We're here together. And let's just keep it moving, keep it moving. Um, so I have once, and that was a couple of years ago, but ever since then, everyone's been kosher and let's, Hey, let's shoot content or, Hey, let's be, you want to be featured in my podcast or, Hey, do you want to go do tag team something together? Um, and I think that shift has come over like the last few years of building each other up together. Yeah, I think that's huge. And I hope that only continues to happen too, especially as we, you know, continue this year and, you know, cause we had 2021 and 2022, which seems like I blacked out those two years because they go, <laughs> they go in by so fast, like, yo, time is flying. So I can only hope and encourage other people to like, really, uh, really just, you know, be a part of the of the solution and and uniting people um, because ultimately like 
if one of us wins, we all win. I've, I've been very big about that. And so, again, I just want to thank you for jumping on. Um, before we get off here, uh, we're, uh, real quick, where can people find you? Website, yeah. all that stuff. All things, everything is the new mix with two X's. Um, website, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, which I don't know who really still uses Facebook. <laughs> the, fa the Facebook page is there. So if you're on Facebook, I'm there as well. Um, but you know, the new mix with two X's. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming. Ebooks, YouTube videos, you name it, it's coming down the pipeline. So also small note, this orange was not color coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that. I know. <laughs> All right. No, well, <laughs> thank you for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm of course. A Hold up. One more thing. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Dreamers Hub podcast. Don't forget to like, comment, rate, and share with the real ones in your life. Be sure to tune in to more inspirational content next week. Peace.